you know, tea is the second most popular beverage in the world after drinking water. Today, we're diving into one of the world's oldest and most powerful super drinks, tea. From green to black, white to oolong, this simple beverage has been treasured for centuries. But did you know that tea could do more than just calm your mind? According to Dr. William Lee, tea may actually have the power to help fight disease and even kill cancer cells. So grab a cup of your favorite brew and let's explore how tea can become your daily defense against illness. It's different kinds of green tea. Matcha tea is actually good for you. Oolong tea, which is slightly fermented green tea, also has metabolic benefits. Matcha tea extracts can kill breast cancer stem cells. Dr. William Lee is a globally renowned scientist who studies how foods can prevent and fight diseases. In his research, tea has consistently shown incredible potential. But what makes tea so powerful? And can it really impact something as complex as cancer? Tea is packed with natural compounds called polyphenols, which are powerful antioxidants. These antioxidants help neutralize free radicals the harmful molecules that can damage cells, leading to chronic diseases and cancer. According to Dr. Lee, the polyphenols in tea go beyond just antioxidant benefits. They actually impact key processes in our bodies, including angiogenesis the way our body grows blood vessels. This is where tea's true power lies. I'm really, really happy, happy to, to be, talking be talking about, about one of my favorite, favorite beverages, beverages, which is tea. I actually drink three to five cups of tea a day, and it's different kinds of tea I actually enjoy. Taste, I love the experience, I like how I feel um, after I have tea. And of course, there are a lot of health benefits with it, and I've actually been a researcher looking at the health benefits of tea. Of tea. So today we're going to talk all about tea. We actually took tea um that had been brewed and uh we studied it in cancer research labs in fact i studied i did some tea research with the national cancer institute and a lot of people don't know uh how you do this but basically you brew tea okay and then it's too hot to really do anything with so you then you cool it and then you refrigerate it and so some people ask well is it only hot tea that's good for you or iced tea is iced tea any good for you well i can tell you in the research lab when we actually study tea the, the tea actually gets refrigerated, so it's actually cold. And of course, then you have to warm it back up to room temperature before you can um, put expose it to cells or, or give, it, give to it to animals, animals to drink, to drink or, or what, what have you. you. So the idea that, you know, brewing tea and, and changing the temperature does not affect its beneficial effects is really important because that means that hot tea or iced tea right. uh, is actually good. Now, we actually studied it in systems they were used for drug development. In other words, um, the same experimental models that are used to test cancer drugs. And what we found was quite remarkable that not just any tea, but multiple teas, not single teas, but multiple teas could actually have this cancer starving effect by cutting off the blood supply. Mm -hmm. And that's really good news. And uh, it's kind of a new discovery uh, in a way, but it builds on all the other uh, reasons that tea could be beneficial to somebody with suffering from cancer, or frankly, if you're if you don't have cancer, it could be a number of other uh, conditions in which you want to have beverage that can calm inflammation in your body, that can help you with better immunity, that can feed your gut microbiome, which are the healthy gut bacteria that can right. communicate to your immune system. So I think there's many reasons why tea is such a beneficial beverage in addition to it being delicious. Tea is something that is even more natural to consume than eating food because it's just, we gotta stay hydrated. Tea is the second most popular beverage in the world after drinking water. Uh, so we're talking about something that a lot of people have a lot of experience with. But I, but what I point out in my book is not just green tea, it's different kinds of green tea. Matcha tea is actually good for you. Oolong tea, which is slightly fermented green tea, also has metabolic benefits, also has polyphenols. And then for green tea, if you have matcha, you know, which you find in a ceremonial tea, you find in a Japanese restaurant, it's a bright green tea. It, it's kind of opaque because it's actually made with powder and it's the entire tea leaf that's powdered. A lot of people don't realize this, but matcha is super packed with polyphenols. You know why? Matcha is grown in a very particular way. 28 days before they pick the the, big, the, the tea leaf from, to make matcha, they put it under shade. They, put, they, they basically cover it with a canopy and the shade is there. So the tea in response to the tea leaf, tea plant in response to shade actually wants to make more polyphenols. So they make anywhere from 30 to 300 times more polyphenols mm -hmm. under the shade. All right. 
And then what happens when you pick the leaf, you cut off the stem, and then they powder, they dry and powder the entire leaf. And so that's why you have so much more polyphenol. Tea contains natural chemicals like catechins, flavonoids, and polyphenols compounds with powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. Green tea, in particular, is rich in EGCG, a catechin known to protect cells from damage and even inhibit tumor growth. You get more, but rather than having it in a tea bag or loose tea leaves, you actually powder the entire leaf. So you're getting the entire leaf, including all the polyphenols. So you drink all the polyphenols, which is why you get 30 to 300 times more than just dunking a tea bag. You also get the dietary fiber, good for your gut microbiome. So matcha tea actually is quite amazing. I actually done a study to show that, uh, that uh, matcha tea extracts can kill breast cancer stem cells. Wow. I'm, I'm always amazed by that because look, as somebody who's been involved with biotech development um, and in cancer treatment development, finding something that could kill stem cells, cancer stem cells, like breast cancer stem cells, which is what makes cancers come back, is a holy grail. We don't have a drug for it, but here, matcha tea actually been shown in the lab to actually be able to do that to me is actually really jaw dropping. So I tested Japanese tea, Chinese jasmine tea. I tested Earl Grey black tea. My assumption about hypothesis is that you're going to actually see that uh, Japanese tea is the most potent, like matcha, for example. And what I found was, in fact, that Earl Grey was the most potent when it comes to angiogenesis and, and, and starving cancer. Like, whoa, black tea scented with bergamot is going to be the most potent tea when it comes to starving your cancer? Like, that's not what the urban legend said. I and mean, that's not what the popular idea is. And so I started realizing maybe there's an urban legend to this. So again, you know, science leads the way and it's still true even if you don't believe it. So I, I saw what in my research I studied, urban, uh, Earl Grey tea was one of the most potent when it comes to angiogenesis. Then Chinese tea, Japanese tea was in fact came third. But what was crazy is that when we started to blend teas together, we just violated the rules of culture and said, yeah, let's go ahead and blend some Chinese and Japanese tea together. Let's mix them together, right? International, right? So when we mix them together, what we found is that blending Chinese and Japanese tea created a food, a, a tea synergy. And the combination of both was more potent than either one alone or additive activity of them when it came to angiogenesis control for starving cancer. Green tea is Dr. Lee's top pick. It's rich in EGCG, a polyphenol that actively fights against inflammation and has been shown to reduce the risk of several cancers. The Studies suggest that drinking two to three cups of green tea daily could help lower your risk of developing cancer by blocking the growth of cancer cells at their earliest stages. If you're more of a black tea drinker, you're in luck. Black tea contains theoflavins and theorubigens, which have also been shown to limit the growth of tumors. Matcha, a type of green tea made from powdered leaves, offers an extra boost of EGCG because you're consuming the entire leaf. This gives matcha tea up to three times the antioxidants of regular green tea making it a powerful anti-cancer agent. There are so, there are many, so more many more ways to, to um, use, use tea. tea. Uh, the most important thing I want people to know is that tea, green tea, brown rice tea, other types of tea, even black teas, they actually um, uh, activate your body's health defense systems. And these are the hardwired systems that we were born with that tea will uh, activate. When our health defenses are activated, our health is protected. It, it, it uh, kind of lowers our risk for multiple diseases. And for something that tastes as good as tea, it's enjoyable as well. Mm -hmm. And tea is also quite relaxing, which I think is really important to, for all of uh, you to know about. So tea comes from a plant, and we know that plant-based foods are good for our health. That's now almost universally recognized. And um, the leaf of the tea, which is what we steep, and you're going to show us this, uh, Mike, nobody does it better than you. But from a sort of researcher's perspective, there are thousands of natural chemicals. We call them bioactives because they act, they, they interact with our biology. And um, some of the compounds that are natural chemicals are like catechins, gallic acid, uh, theanin, and theoflavins. And they all wind up in a cup of tea when you brew it. And um, some of the amazing things that have been shown by research is that drinking tea uh, actually can uh, help prevent our cells from aging. So it's even as a, I'm sure the emperor didn't have the science, but appreciated that anti-aging properties of tea prevents our telomeres from shortening. So we stay, our cells stay younger, slow down cellular aging. Um, there's a polyphenol, everybody talks about polyphenols. So I like to be specific. specific. So, so the polyphenol, polyphenol that 
tea that has been best studied in tea is called EGCG, uh, epigallocatechin gallate, EGCG, and green tea has a lot of it because it's closest to what comes off the tea plant. And then everything from that, all teas come from that downstream in terms of how they're prepared. Um, uh, but green tea has, you know, as much as 16 times that EGCG than some of the more processed or handled uh, teas. And one of the, my favorite things to talk about EGCG is that I did research on this with the National Cancer Institute, is if you take tea um, and you put it into the same system that is growing blood vessels that would feed a cancer, cancers are harmless if they can't get a blood supply. And if you put tea in that system, the blood vessels that would feed a tumor cannot grow. It takes it right, takes it right apart, prevents new ones from growing. And, you know, and so people um, say, well, that's really amazing. Was it hot tea or cold tea? Well, in the research lab, we've got to use okay. cold tea. We use cold tea. So obviously you wouldn't put a poor hot tea into a, into a dish. You'd, you'd cook everything. So this goes to show uh, that the hot tea, which is where it started, and that we had to chill the tea in the refrigerator in a glass... Um, a pitcher, we turned the hot tea into iced tea, and the next day when it was cold, we then tested it in the lab. So this shows that this anti-angiogenic, cancer-starving property of tea, the EGCG, is present in both the hot tea and preserved through, you know, from the steeping, but also preserved in the refrigeration and cooling, and still works when it's cold. So I, I think that the good news there is hot tea iced tea. It all works. It actually helps our circulation. It's been shown in the lab to help fight cancer growth. Other studies have shown lowers blood pressure, helps your blood cholesterol, helps your immune system. It's got antioxidants and anti-inflammatory properties. And the thing that one of the things that, you know, I always say is, you know, show me the, the evidence. Well, there's been clinical studies involving people showing that drinking two to three cups of green tea a day is associated with more than a 40% reduction in the risk of developing colon cancer. Let me, tell you, let me share a little bit about the, um, the different types of diseases that tea has been shown through research to be protective of and how much you need to drink. And so we talked about the fact that for colon cancer, research has shown that drinking two to three cups of green tea uh, causes a, a, a substantial reduction of about 40 some percent. Cardiovascular disease, um, you know, heart disease, which in cardiovascular is all the blood vessels in our body, stroke, brain, uh, heart attack, four cups of tea a day, which I easily drink four cups of tea a day, um, has been shown to substantially lower the risk of heart disease. Same amount, dose, for lowering the risk of lupus, which is an autoimmune inflammatory disease, calming the immune system down to the right size. And you know, and you some, know some of the things that really surprised me, me by, by lowering, lowering inflammation, inflammation without, without compromising, compromising our, our immunity, immunity against bacteria and viruses, um, you know, about four to five cups a day has been shown to be beneficial to protect against multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease, and rheumatoid arthritis as well. Sometimes I like a really strong cup of tea, and sometimes I like a, a, a lighter a cup of tea, and that's why the Having tea leaves, you know, the loose leaf tea is great. On the other hand, you know, if you have a tea in a bag or a sachet, um, you can also just pull the bag or sachet out. The one little tip that I'll tell you from the health and polyphenol perspective is if you're using tea that's in its own bag or, uh, or sachet, you want to dunk that tea um, periodically while it's steeping because that action will actually allow the natural healthy chemicals the egcg to come out into the water better so it's um, wonderful that you know you can be any age you could be a teenager you could be i mean like you know young kids are starting to really come on to tea as well um and i think that this is um something that can tea is something you can drink your whole life and that's the other wonderful so the next time you sip your tea Remember that you're not just enjoying a warm drink, you're fueling your body with powerful nutrients that may help protect you from disease and even fight cancer cells. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe for more health tips and let us know in the comments what's your favorite type of tea.